I love creating an environment for entrepreneurs to come together to support each other and heal. And one of the things that really stood out to me, my keynote that I did this year is work supports life, not the other way around. And we had our participants take our new assessment to assess their level of entrepreneurial burnout in conjunction with the gaps that exist in their business. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question, what has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling, the business psychologist, the author of How to Hire the Best, and your co-host on the Profit by Design podcast. Weekly, my co-host, Mike Bruno, and I bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. At Tap the Potential, we know that you want to be freed from the constant demands of your business. In order to do that, you need a business that supports your life. The problem is you have a cash-sucking business taking over your life, leaving you frustrated and discouraged. We believe work supports life, not the other way around. We understand you're paying a team and you're still having to do it all. There should be accountability. It shouldn't be this hard, which is why through our proprietary coaching system, we help thousands of business owners just like you have more time for what's important to them and grow profit by 300 to 800%. Here's how we do it. First, take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Next, meet with our success team lead to debrief your results. Then join our Better Business, Better Life program. By the end of your first year with us, you will have more time for what matters to you and more money in your bank account than you've ever had before. So take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment so you can stop working so hard for so little return. Take your life back. So Sabrina. You have some big news about the retreat that you just had. I'm sure you're probably a little bit exhausted, but super excited. So can you tell us a little bit on how everything went? Yes, I have big breakthroughs myself. And you're right in kind of capturing the feeling. I am very, not drained, but it takes a lot of energy to do the retreat. And I also feel a real high after spending four days with this incredible group of entrepreneurs that joined us. And one of the things that I think is so amazing about this group is these are entrepreneurs who are just like you and I, Mike, they want to grow, they want to improve, they want to learn from others so they don't have to repeat the mistakes. And they're so willing to be vulnerable and open about where they've been and what struggles they've experienced. There was tremendous healing in this room here at the Entrepreneurs Retreat Center for people who've been carrying a lot of shame around what they in the past have blamed themselves for, the struggles that they've had. And the healing came from recognizing, you know, these struggles are not because of some mistake the entrepreneur has made. These struggles are because of the stage that the business is in. These are normal struggles and they are challenges. They're very hard to deal with and we all do the best we can. And as we learn from other entrepreneurs, we find ways to deal with things that are easier and more effective And the healing that happened is people letting go of shame, people telling things that they've been carrying around in their head about their business, about their marriages, about their kids and families, where they've just been holding on to things that they felt tremendous shame around. That was released here. And I cannot express how powerful that is to let that stuff go and how important it is for us as entrepreneurs to let that go. No, absolutely. And I want to dig into that feeling a little bit. Like, you know, what you said, you know, you have a feeling of high, you know, I was fortunate enough to attend a couple of the retreats a couple of years ago. And, you know, just real quick, I'll explain what my high was. And then 
I'd like to hear your perspective on it. But, you know, definitely going into a little bit deeper of what you said, you know, there's a tremendous amount of weight that we carry around and it's the shame, the guilt, you know, the constant, you know, we beat ourselves up a lot or we have this tendency to internalize a lot of things. And I know for myself that when you're surrounded by a group of people that are willing to be vulnerable, it's such an interesting feeling, right? It's this feeling that I had was, you know, just a feeling of comfort, feeling of belonging, this kind of undefinable energy, right? It's not like energy, like everybody screaming and running around, right? But it's this weird calming energy, right? That kind of helps lift some of that burden off and then prepare you for taking some changes and taking the next steps forward. You know, so whenever I think about those retreats and even when I, you know, saw some of the posts that everybody was making as they were on their journey back home and they got home, right? You can tell just in the, in what they were writing and the words that they were choosing that they were on a whole nother mental level and there was a huge mindset shift. So for you, right, you know, you're obviously an entrepreneur and, you know, you're facilitating a lot of this retreat, but explain, you know, what is that high mean to you, for you personally? And then I'm sure it must feel awesome to see all these other people <laughs> like that. So, you know, maybe just explain a little bit about what you personally go through, you know, when that happens. So I love the words you chose, like this weird calming energy, because what I'm feeling is weird calming energy with exhilaration. So I'm calm and I'm exhilarated. So I'm calmly exhilarated. I don't know, like that's the you know, big juxtaposition. So today I've had these, you and I are getting together now. I have had six follow-up phone calls with participants. So I talk, every time we do a retreat, I make it a point to have a one-to-one -one follow up call with our participants within two weeks of them coming back from the retreat. Because you know, a retreat for me is kind of like a wedding. There's all these guests that show up and I care about each one tremendously. And I would love to sit and talk individually with each one at the retreat. And it's very hard to have a in-depth focused conversation. So it's just like when you get married and all your family comes and you really want to connect with everybody, but you have to work the room essentially. And so that's what it's like for me at the retreat. I, and the other thing, Mike, I have such severe FOMO <laughs> at the retreat because I can look across the room and I will see three of our participants or five of our participants in conversation and I see the hand gestures going and I see smiles and I see tears and I think what are they talking about I want no <laughs> and so when I have the follow-up calls I'm asking what are your takeaways what are the things that you heard that you took in at this retreat that are impacting you and so that helps me with my FOMO but the piece that I get really excited about is just what you're touching on is seeing those posts from our alumni in the private Facebook group that we have where people's mindsets are shifting. So much of our journey as entrepreneurs is 90% mental. It is not tactical. Mm -hmm. We think it's tactical. We think we need to read another book and we need, you know, this or that tool. And if we sign up for that course, that one will be the answer finally that we've been looking for. And it's not the tactics. It is the mindset. And when we get our mindset right, it is a snowball effect because all the good flows from that. So one of the things that I noticed last year at the retreats, we had a couple of participants who were very in very precarious places in their business when they joined us last year at the retreat. This year, they're coming back. Their business is strong. Like revenue is increasing, profit is increasing. The things that are happening in their lives, the things they're able to do in their lives are things they never thought were possible. And that is happening over the course of a year. And prior to coming into the retreat, I'm sure if we would have asked them, how long do you think it'll take you to get to this point where you can have this home and you can have this level of sales in your business? They probably would have said, well, several years. I'm several years away from that. They're not several years away when they get their mindset right. And part of, and I don't want to just indicate that it's all because of what happens at the retreat, because the retreat really is the tip of the iceberg. All of our, well, not all, but 90% of our participants at the retreat are Better Business, Better Life program. And so what's happening at the retreat precipitates what we work on with them throughout the year in the Better Business, Better Life program. But I know when they come to the retreat, their souls get nourished their mindset shift. 
and we do these cue storming sessions. And it was kind of a joke at first, you know, we break into these smaller groups and we all sit around outside and mastermind, but it's done with quite powerful questioning rather than masterminding and brainstorming solutions. So we're brainstorming powerful questions and we're doing experience sharing. In those groups, people would jump up and yell, breakthrough, you know, because it's breakthroughs on the bayou. And at first it started as a joke. But then it became really real that there were real massive breakthroughs happening in the course of a 30 minute conversation that these entrepreneurs were having with each other because of the structure that we provided, the setting that we provided safe and supported is a theme that, you know, Steve Bousquet, one of our participants, that was his theme for last year that he took out of the retreat and brought back to his business and used with his team. His intention was to make his whole team feel safe and supported. Well, it's really become a theme of the retreat because that is the atmosphere that we're creating at Breakthroughs on the Bayou. This is a safe, supported space to play full out to dance like no one's watching you, sing like no one's watching you, and just talk about the things that only go through your head that you don't share with anybody else. And when you open up that way, the realization that I'm not alone, this is not me, is so powerful. Yeah. So for anybody that listens to this podcast along the way and is thinking about attending the retreat and they're saying, you know, I'm kind of shy, I don't know, I'm kind of scared, I'm nervous. You know, the one thing that I want to say before, you know, you jump in and kind of add a couple of things towards that is that, you know, I'm an extremely, you know, introverted person. However, I realized that by opening up and being, you know, humble and being vulnerable allowed me to grow in so many different ways, personally, professionally. And it also just helped me identify that you know, that label of being shy or being introverted or how come, you know, Mike's not smiling and he must not be happy or he's not saying much, right? There's nothing wrong with that. It's just who I am and I'm different than other people. However, in that group setting, everything was welcoming, right? So going to the retreat, you know, I never felt out of place or like I had to talk more or I had to do this or I had to do that. It was really, you know, it's almost like everybody comes together completely like, you know, as one, right? I mean, you have all these individual personalities, you have some A-types, you have, you know, people that are quiet, people that run nonstop, but it was everybody just kind of gelled together, right? So, I mean, what's your thoughts on that for, you know, somebody who's just saying like, oh, I, I would never put myself in that position and I'm too nervous and I'm scared. And Yeah, I would say you're going to be nervous and scared and you're going to be here and in 20 minutes, you're going to be comfortable. And I say that with confidence before that said repeatedly to me today by our participants, some of them who were new coming into the retreat. And our group is a little different in that we have a lot of introverts amongst us. So I'm an introvert. I put a lot of attention to how we've created the setting to support introverts. A lot of conferences that we go to are not designed for introverts. They are designed for extroverts. Extroverts get energy from socializing. So all those meet and greets, you know, going to lunch with people when you're at a conference, going to dinner afterwards, going out afterwards, all the connecting and networking that you do at most conferences is designed for extroverts and it drains an introvert's batteries very, very quickly. So as we design the agenda, I put attention to making sure there are breaks, there's opportunities. We tell our introverts, you know, step into my office here. This is the quiet room. You can sit here and still hear everything that's going on in the great room and no one will see you. And it's like you're off in your own little world. So we have places where the introverts can get away and kind of pull themselves back together and then come back to join the group when they're ready. We strive to make it totally safe and supported. Coming into the retreat, our alumni did videos for our new participants to share with them about what to expect. A lot of these videos were off the cuff. They were just done because an alumni felt it was important to share. Our alumni are very invested in this experience so much so that they are giving us input. And when I hear them talking about the retreat, they talk about, we're going to do this next year. We're going to do that. So they're almost like they own it. Every participant who comes to the retreat owns their role in creating value for everyone else and extracting value from it. 
And what's so interesting about that is that, you know, and I don't know if you did this by design or if it just the culture kind of developed itself. But I mean, I know part of it was by design, right? Because your dream was to have, you know, a place for retreats and, you know, the ability to bring like-minded business owners together that can grow and go through these changes together. But it's almost like if you were to design a retreat, you almost couldn't even design that into it, right? It's like somehow, like you just said, everybody's really bringing their own value and they're owning it. So, I mean, that's super, super special. And, you know, I hope you know how important that is to everybody that is participating because, you know, like I said, it just, it happened, right? And it happened because of the foundation that you laid out and the content and the people that you're allowing in, right? I mean, it's not anyone who feels like coming can come, right? So, you know, it's truly special, you know, how it's working, right? I mean, it's really phenomenal. And I have to say, You know, I know in talking to you in past years, you spend a lot of time and energy preparing and for the retreat to happen. And you're going like morning till late in the night, every single day, making sure that everybody has an awesome experience. And even though I'm sure you're tired, I mean, I know it's a couple of days after the retreat now, but the sound of your voice is much different than a week ago or two weeks ago or three weeks ago. You know, definitely I hear some, you know, calm and some peace and some energy from you also. Yeah. Thank you for acknowledging that, Mike. So one of my growing edges every year with this retreat is to get better and better at delegating. So this year coming into the retreat, I did not go full speed up until the last three days. And I will tell you, I went full. I have my step counter. I was looking at that today. Three days before the retreat, I was way over 10,000 steps. And I didn't do any exercise. That was just running around getting things done. Yep. I was up at, I think, maybe 1.30 in the morning the day before the participants arrived baking brownies. And the brownies were a hit. That was a request from our participants. So there's, you know, we ask participants what's important to them. And I put a lot of attention on the little details for individual people about what's important to them. That's important to me because these are 25 participants who are coming into my home and I want every single person to feel special and recognized. And it is so enjoyable to me to do those little extra things. Next year, one of my learnings from this retreat is I will have boots on the ground from my team a day or two ahead of the retreat because a lot of the little run that I was doing ahead of the retreat were things that, because we have a virtual team, they're all over the country. I don't have anyone local. If my assistant had been here or one of our other assistants had been here, they would have been the one running to Office Depot to get coffees and that sort of thing. That's not the best use of my time. So, but that, you know, we're always learning and improving. And I think another thing that is so helpful is because I do these follow-up calls after the retreat, I get all the feedback while it's fresh about the things that could be better next time around. And we implement those. I take extensive notes and we do those things. I love creating an environment for entrepreneurs to come together to support each other and heal. And one of the things that really stood out to me, my keynote that I did this year is work supports life, not the other way around. And we had our participants take our new assessment to assess their level of entrepreneurial burnout in conjunction with the gaps that exist in their business. And this is what I'm studying as part of writing the four-week vacation book that's going to come out in December. My hypothesis is that the more gaps that exist in the systems and people in our business, the more gaps we as the entrepreneur are filling and the more symptoms of burnout we're going to have. And so now I have data from about 25 entrepreneurs and in eyeballing that data, and it's a very small sample size, and this is not a random sample. These are very, you know, select entrepreneurs, obviously, because we pick them to be at the retreat, but that's definitely the case that, you know, the symptoms of burnout are more extreme and more for those who don't have team members who have not started systematizing, who have one or two things in place in their business, and yet there's still a lot of work to be done. And on the other side of that, 
it's very encouraging for me to see the participants who have been in our Better Business, Better Life program for a year, two or three years even, and to look at some of them have just a couple of symptoms of entrepreneurial burnout. Some of them have no symptoms. And that really speaks to when we look at what's in place in their business, they have a lot of foundation and support. They've built these sustainable businesses that we talk about here on the Profit by Design podcast. And because they have put that intention in their business, their quality of life is going up and up. And what's really important to me in our Better Business, Better Life program, which is the program that we run year round. And so I think I want to clarify for our profit designers that if you're looking at the retreat and you think, wow, I really want to be a part of that next year, the best place to start is to look at coming into our Better Business, Better Life program, because that's where you really get the foundation and the retreat really is kind of like the cherry on top of the cake. So, you know, and that starts with taking this assessment, our entrepreneurial burnout assessment, and it's available to you at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. You will get a read on your own level of entrepreneurial burnout, as well as the gaps that are currently in place in your business. And then you're offered the opportunity to have a debriefing of your assessment with Darren Hopman, who's our success team lead. He'll go through with you and talk to you about what your results mean and help you start to work on a plan for addressing that. The thing about entrepreneurial burnout is the longer we let it go, the less effective we become as entrepreneurs. It sucks our soul out of us. And I have felt burnout in a professional capacity when I worked in mental health. And it robbed me of my joy in what I was doing. It led me to make decisions that put people at risk that I didn't like because I was not using my best thinking. And so an example of that with this assessment, we're also looking at how many hours a week is an entrepreneur working and what amount of sleep are they getting? I really see that the biggest problem that comes from entrepreneurial burnout is the lack of sleep. When we see an entrepreneur sleeping six or out six hours or less consistently each night, that's when I know they're headed for trouble because when we're shortchanging our sleep like that, we have toxins building up in our brain. Those toxins don't sleep clears them out. Deep sleep, REM sleep clears them out. And that takes about eight hours to get to that level of sleep. So when we're not clearing those toxins out consistently, we make bad judgment calls and we don't realize we're making bad judgment calls. And we get that tunnel vision that sets in and we miss opportunities around us to do simple things that would be much more effective than the decision that we're making in the moment. I started talking about this by saying, I remember being burnt out as a clinician, as a mental health professional, and having to get up in the middle of the night to take an emergency call when someone was suicidal or homicidal. And I had a situation where I was, I had been working, I'm sure 70 hours that week, and I was on call. I had had several nights where I had been up and going out to handle situations and then coming back and sleeping a couple hours and going to work the next day. And one situation I had was where someone was suicidal at the hospital and I didn't handle it appropriately and they got released. And had I you know, filled out the paperwork correctly and dotted a few I's and crossed some T's, they would have not been released. I don't know if they ended up committing suicide because they disappeared. I don't know whatever happened to that person. We never found out. And I look at that and I think, holy smokes, that happened because I was burnt out. And had I been rested, some, some simple changes in how I handled that protocol would have made all the difference. And we entrepreneurs make decisions like that all the time from a place of burnout. Yeah, that's so true. And you and I talked about this a couple of years ago where we were talking about, you know, why is it out there that to be an entrepreneur, you have to work 70, 80 or 90 hours a week and be some kind of maniac and sacrifice so much? You know, it's almost like, you know, if you ask a person, what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? You know, it's almost automatic where, well, I assume I'm going to work, you know, triple what everybody else does. I'm going to be busy every weekend, every single night. I'm going to let my health go to crap. I'm going to you know, miss all my family stuff. I'm going to, you know, it's just going to be a total mess. And it truly doesn't need to be that way. And 
really, it's so unhealthy, right? I mean, because then you get in this fog and like this whole, you don't even know what's happening anymore. Like the lack of sleep, the toxins, the numbness, right? You're just like, boom, 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 boom. And it's, you're really sacrificing chunks of your life. You know, it almost needs to be like a scared straight type of program where it's like, you know, if you're really going to be an entrepreneur, do it the right way, because the alternative is so damaging in so many ways that it's just out of control. Yeah, it really is that work supports life, not the other way around. And the dominant discourse about entrepreneurship is that if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you better be tough. You better be ready to grind it out. And, you know, the fist bumping that happens around, you know, here's my revenue. And yeah, I worked 70 hours this past week. I haven't had a vacation in a year. I have to take my cell phone with me on vacation. Look at me. I am really cool. Like that's insane to think that way. But that's how we run around and talk to each other, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you're another entrepreneur and you say, you know, how are you doing? Oh, I'm so busy. Oh man, you wouldn't believe what's been going on. And then we start with, you know, all the busyness and all the things where our team is failing us and whatever. That's not healthy. And the flip side of it is to embrace and own, I'm going to create a business that supports my life. I'm taking my life back from my business. That's what I saw happening at this retreat. And that's what I see happening every retreat, because that's really what the four week vacation challenge is a stake in the ground saying this business is not going to take over my life anymore. It is time for this business to grow up and serve me. Those are such important words. I hope that, or, you know, I urge people to just write some of those things down because when you're flipping it around, right, that you're working to support your life not living to work. It's a, such a huge shift, right? Because everybody, you know, work takes up so much of our lives and we get brainwashed into thinking that I must work, 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 work in order to live, 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 but it's not that way, right? You need to really, it needs to be flipped around so that all of there's clarity, you know, everything's intentional. There's a means to the end. And real quick, I met with a, um, an old friend about a month ago. He has a business and, you know, we hadn't seen each other in years and we were just talking and he said, you know, he was asking what I was up to and this and that. And we were just, you know, I think we had just come back from our cabin in Pennsylvania. So I was telling him about that. He's like, you know, I haven't been on vacation in two years. And I was so sad when I heard that. And it was like, you know, I couldn't help but think that like, it's so pathetic that he's in a position or he thinks he's in a position and not pathetic in a mean way. Maybe that's not the right word, but I was like so concerned, right, for his health and his well-being that he hasn't had a chance to reset, right? And it's almost like you can see the life sucked out of somebody's face, (laughs) you know? And it's so scary when you realize that that's what happens, you know, because for so many years I didn't, you know, for so many years I just work, 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 nonstop, 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 nonstop. And the quicker you go, it's really the behinder you get. And the interesting thing, one other thing is that statistically, I used to do research on the lost productivity when you have field workers in the construction industry working past 40 hour mark, right? And I don't remember the statistics because it was years ago, but you know, after 45 hours, 50 hours, the productivity rate dramatically decreases. And I'm sure that's across any industry, right? And it's really the same for entrepreneurs as well. I find that I'm so much more effective now over the last several years by working less because the amount that I'm working is so much more intentional. It's highly effective. I'm not wasting time. I'm not stewing and stirring and making poor decisions. Of course, I make mistakes, right? But it's just, I'm getting so much more done with less time. And now I'm living more. I have more time to live. Absolutely. One of the, what you're speaking to is a real phenomenon in terms of we are not designed to work 40 hours a week. There's some research now that shows that 20 to 30 hours a week is optimal. That's where we're going to hit our optimal levels of productivity. Our mindset about how we work in the United States is totally out of whack. The things that we tell ourselves about not needing vacation is crazy. We have entrepreneurs like Elon Musk. Elon, if you're listening, I'm calling you to the carpet on this one. When you work 70 to 90 hours a week and you brag about that, you know, your dedication and your leadership, that's not great leadership. That is a horrible example for other entrepreneurs. And I wonder, Elon, 
what kind of leader you'd be if you were more rested because, oh my gosh, you have so much potential. Very true. So we're going to have to wrap up here shortly, but I wanted to take a few minutes and read some of the statements that our participants shared. We asked them to highlight some of the hardest, most challenging things they have endured as entrepreneurs. And so I want to read some of these first because I think it'll be very cathartic for our listeners to hear this, to recognize they're not alone. And then I want to end with reading what our participants are experiencing in their lives now that they've taken their life back from their business or that they intend to experience in the next year as they take their life back from their business. So I'm going to start with the hardest, most challenging thing. And I can't read all of them. There's a ton of them here. I'm just going to give a sampling. And these are in their words. I am broke. I cause my wife and children disrespect and distress because I am depressed and without hope or enthusiasm. I am working for publicity. I am working for free. I suffer sleepless nights worrying about my clients. I never take my daughter to school or pick her up. I worked through my maternity leave with my last child. I used the business as an excuse to act terrible to the ones I love the most. I take money out of my home equity line of credit to make payroll. I take on work I shouldn't. I allowed the business to get in the way of my relationship with my husband and our children. I disrespect my wife. I routinely eat dinner after 9 p.m. I watch my family drive off to the beach when I go to work. A seven-hour day is a half day for me. I just have to say, as I read this, I feel very heavy. It is heartbreaking to see that. And that's not even half of what was shared. So I want to flip it now. And these are some of the comments that our participants who have reclaimed their life, what they're experiencing now. And then these are also participants who are actively working to reclaim their life, what they will be experiencing in the next year. I throw dinner parties on the weekends. I work less than 40 hours a week. My team thrives because they make a good living and have a job they love, and so do I. I find joy at work and at home every moment of the day. I have no debt. I walk my dog and listen to a podcast for 30 minutes every day. Hopefully that's profit by design. (laughs) I have more time margin to do the things I truly enjoy and to be with my husband and our children. I meet my friends for lunch. I take weekends off. I sleep through the night. I love life. I play with my dogs. I'm excited. I'm proactive, not reactive. I'm not broke. I work when I want to and not because I have to. I add vacation days to both sides of business travel and invite friends to share the experience. I take an impulsive two-day trip to Disney World with my son. That is what it looks like when you do entrepreneurship in a healthy way. The experience of being an entrepreneur who takes your life back from your business, every one of you listening, you have that opportunity to draw the line in the sand right now and say, enough, I am done with this unhealthy way of being. I'm going to take my life back. And in doing so, not only am I going to create more time for what matters most to me, I'm also going to do it in a way where I make more money and have more money in my bank account because I'm being more strategic and more effective in the choices I make. That's what we are all about in what we're doing with our entrepreneurs at Tap the Potential in our Better Business, Better Life program and at the retreat. And I just want to acknowledge when you're in that space of working 70, 90 hours a week, and you're barely breaking even, and you're having to take out loans to cover payroll or putting your own house and your personal financial well being at stake to cover payroll, it feels unbelievable. It feels like, you know, I hear all these good things, but I can't possibly see how I can get there from where I am now. And so, what I wanna offer is that it's really about the small steps forward taken in a consistent direction that lead to huge change in a very short period of time. And the first small step forward is let's get a handle on what's really going on and let's take an honest look at how your business and the gaps in your business are impacting you 
and let's start working on reclaiming your life from your business. It's really so powerful. I'm almost, you know, at a loss for words, which I never am. But, you know, just reading both sides of the fence on that is such a huge difference. And I definitely urge anyone who's, you know, in that place of you need a change. And like Sabrina just said, you feel like you can't take the leap or you just don't even know where to start. Just take the step forward. And, you know, it doesn't change overnight. It's a marathon. But by taking action and moving forward to, you know, reclaiming your life and putting your life first is definitely one of the most important things an entrepreneur can do. Absolutely. Mike, I really appreciate you interviewing me about my experience at the retreat. This has been like a debriefing for me and I needed that. I debriefed with our team right after the retreat and having a few days out from it now and the time to really reflect. I'm sure I'll have more insights and aha moments, but it's been very cathartic for me to be able to come here today with you and with our profit designers and just share what it's like as Dr. Sabrina watching all these things happen at the retreat and all the good stuff. And I want to close by saying that we ended the retreat with a call to action for our participants to be a gift from their gifts, to step up those who have healed, whose businesses are in stronger places, to reach out to those who are still in struggle and to be a gift and share their strengths. And I am so touched by seeing our participants reaching out and sharing and supporting each other with things that they're good at. And it's a struggle for someone else. They're offering a a hand, you know, like a hand up and just saying, Hey, let's get on the phone and talk about this. That kind of stuff does not happen in the entrepreneurial world. We tend to operate in our silos and the breakthroughs on the Bayou participants are out there. They're determined to spread the message that work supports life, not the other way around. And not only are they determined to do that, they are stepping up to be a gift from their gifts to share what they've learned on the Bayou with others in their world. They're taking it back to their families. They're taking it back into their businesses. And I really feel like communities and communities are going to be impacted by what goes on at this retreat because there's a good way of being that's being cultivated here. And I am really excited as we go into the next retreats in the years ahead to see how that continues to spread. So I want to acknowledge our participants for that. And Sabrina, I just want to thank you for, um, you know, being so open and honest. And really, that was such a feel good conversation. I mean, there was many times during that conversation that, you know, I felt a lot of energy and I felt those chills of just, you know, how helpful all of this is. And, you know, just how meaningful it is that to change people's lives. I mean, it really is so special. Thank you for that. All right. I think we should wrap up. Wrap it up. Thank you, everybody. If you're like most business owners, you have a cash sucking business that's taking over your life. After the first year in our Better Business, Better Life program at Tap the Potential, you'll have more time for what matters to you and more money in your bank account than you've ever had. Get started. Take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Thank you for spending time with us today. Join our conversation in the Profit by Design podcast Facebook group. Share your thoughts on today's episode, ask us questions, and let us know what you want to hear about next. Visit our website at ProfitByDesignPodcast.com to access resources from our sponsors and tools we've created for you. Subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're listening to right now. There's a subscribe button right there. Go ahead and hit it so that you always get a notification when we release a new episode. And finally, share our podcast with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. Thanks again for listening. This is real life business. Keep your chin up. Keep moving forward. You got this.